if you're building on a budget, chances are you probably spend a whole lot of your money on the graphics card. So that leaves you with a little bit of money on your processor. So you've got a few choices here and your options are probably something cheap and brand new like the Ryzen 4100 or you can go with something that's a bit older but an 8 core processor like the Ryzen 2700X. In 2024, the Ryzen 2700X will probably be fine for single player games, you know, 60 FPS or something like that. However, how about fast paced multiplayer shooters wherein speed and quick response is essential? And that's what we're here to find out. So we've got our Ryzen 2700X on our X570 rig. We paired this processor with a capable RTX 3060 12 gigabyte card. The 2700X only has PCIe 3.0, so having 16X lanes on the 3060 should help address its bandwidth limitations. All benchmarks were recorded using an external PC, so there's no performance loss. And for you guys who are new to the channel, we don't do chats here. What I want you guys to focus is the system response, particularly frame times during heavy action scenarios. This is a real-time measurement of smoothness or stuttering in-game. The more erratic this line is, the more stuttery your experience will be and the more likely you'll miss your shots. Ideally, you would want this to be a straight line. Okay, let's start with our first game and this is Warzone, the map of Uzbekistan. Of course, it's important to note that Warzone utilizes a lot of traits and although the 2700X has weaker single core performance compared to modern processors, the presence of 16 traits does help on this DX12 game. It's able to hit around 90 FPS or maybe lower. Frame times is obviously not the best, it's a bit erratic, it's a slow experience and you could definitely feel the latency on this one. However, you can still play the game and do expect that you are at a disadvantage. As mentioned, frame times can be erratic but you'll be able to get a hang out of it. And if you remember a few months back when we look at the Ryzen 4100, that one was just unplayable. At least with the 2700X, it is still able to give you a slightly better experience compared to that one. Next game is Helldivers 2. Here's how the 2700X runs on medium 1080p native. Let's compare this against medium settings but on an ultra quality upscaling. Looks like we've got some advantage here with upscaling. However, this is only a small area with limited action. How about in the real world with Helldive difficulty and we're swarm with a lot of those terminated bugs. And here we have a real world terminated swarm on our upscaled setting. We are not GPU down here with the swarm of bugs. There's a bit of a load on our CPU, hence why our FPS is just hovering around 60. And those frame times are really bad. Yes, you can play with this frame times and yes, you can adopt your playstyle to this performance. However, you can feel the delay and the stutter on this game. Good thing this is only only a PvE game so pressure isn't the same as the rest of our shooters. Here's with medium settings, no upscaling, just the native one and you can see that the performance is relatively the same as the one with ultra quality upscaling. So we are clearly limited by a CPU here. It's playable and bearable and hey it's a $61 CPU so what do you expect right? Our next competitive game is Fortnite. A lot of people underestimate this game too much. This game runs on Unreal Engine 5. Now, most people who just benchmark and don't actually play this game will think that 144 FPS is enough for this game. Well, it's not, right? It's not. This game actually needs a lot more FPS if you're going to be into those build fights. We're currently in a vehicle season, so let's go with that. Here's all three APIs, DX11, DX12, and performance mode. And so far, what we see here is that performance mode is probably your best option. Giving our weaker single core performance, I'd say we might as well be staying with performance mode on this one. Okay, here's our game using the performance mode API. As always, we are not GPU bound here. The 3060 is not fully utilized. However, we do have lower FPS with our 2700X. Yes, we can hit 200 FPS at times, but most of the time we are dropping lower than that. Frame times are erratic and not very stable. You can see it jumping all over the place, hence the weapon percent lows is less than 100. So that's pretty bad too. Yes, you can game on Fortnite with a 2700X, but if you're serious on competitive Fortnite, I wouldn't recommend a 2700X. 100x get something better. 
and if you guys want this type of content processors and our reviews don't forget to hit that like button for the youtube algorithm next game is valorant and here we have competitive settings at 1080p and right off the bat you can see that we are limited by the 2700x right here competitive valorant is highly dependent on cpu performance and here we only have around 200 fps which is okay it's not great it's not bad it's yeah one thing you'll notice is that the 2700x does have these micro stutters every now and then which stays throughout the game especially when there are a lot of effects now this is common at the start of the game you know the first couple of rounds but this occurrence tends to stay with the 2700x so that's something to take note of our next game is PUBG, and we have the dx11 enhanced api here with dx11 enhanced it adds a lot of load onto our g GPU. However, with the Ryzen 2700X, we haven't maxed out our RTX 3060, which means that once again, we are limited with our processor. And despite that, the 2700X is actually not bad here. It is able to maintain decent frame rates at around 150 and frame times do have status, but it's not terrible compared to our Fortnite experience. Given that PUBG is a slower paced game compared to our other shooters, the 2700X is okay for this type of gameplay. There are stutters, which you do get as you move through the map, but this is an engine issue rather than a hardware issue. I'm quite okay with the 2700X in this game. Apex Legends is another fast paced shooter. The maximum FPS in this game is 300. However, we are not able to hit that with our Ryzen 2700X. It has a weaker single core performance which limits the system's ability to push those frames harder however in saying that we are able to hit 150 fps on this game and the stability is amazingly good we don't experience any heavy stuttering during our clutch moments even with smokes which is quite refreshing apex legends seems to be a very optimized game and i'm not surprised that our 2700x is able to pull its weight and maintain stability in this fast paced game here we compare the ryzen 7 2700x against a slightly newer ryzen 3 4100 now they're both roughly the same in terms of pricing however we have eight weaker cores on the 2700x against four slightly better cores on the 4100 first up is valorant as mentioned before this game heavily relies on the processor once the gpu threshold has been surpassed in competitive settings we can see the clear difference between the two in running shots and in heavy action scenarios even though the 2700x has an older architecture it is still better compared to the 4100 next up is pubg this is another dx11 title which is heavily reliant on the graphics card and on this one it seems like both of our processors are really close and we're clearly cpu bottleneck on both scenes with the 4100 able to push the 3060 a little bit higher compared to the 2700x on our mortar benchmarks we do see the 4100 pulling slightly ahead here but just slightly next one is hell divers 2 which is a dx12 game so a bit of a modern api and on our running shots we see that both processors are really close to each other and this is the same when we go through our firing shots and even on our stratagem testing the 2700x is utilizing half of its threads while the ryzen trade 4100 is only utilizing two-thirds of its threads the Ryzen 2700X is indeed a viable option in 2024 as long as you taper down your expectations. This is a $61 processor after all. The upside with this versus the Ryzen 4100 is that the 2700X actually has 4 extra cores, which can be useful if you're doing other things which do take advantage of its extra cores. It is cheaper and definitely a serious consideration for the budget gamer. The obvious upgrade path for this would be the Ryzen 5700X3D or the 5800X3D. The 5700X3D is only $199 and can be dropped in later on once our budget gamer has garnered more money. If you agree with our take on this processor, it would really help me if you hit that like button. And if you're interested on the performance of the 4100, we have a dedicated video of that processor right here. So click this one and we'll see you guys over there.